considering his size, Allen Iverson just having a great year. As you mentioned, MVP-like, the willingness to trust his teammates, making the bounce pass off a screen and roll. How about the defense? Second in the league in steal, a huge steal against the Miami Heat, kicks it to Kyle Korver for a big three. Allen Iverson against Indiana the very next night, taking it to the hole, then playing a passing lane and getting a layup. Allen Iverson, as we've come to know him, shot clock winding down, sizing up the defense one-on-one, -on -one, nails it. A huge victory for the Philadelphia 76ers. 38 points in 53 minutes. The next night, 43 points in 44 minutes. This guy gets it done scoring and with the assist. He's incredible. The formula right now, Kelly, for the Nets is pretty simple. They go undefeated the rest of the way. They go to the playoffs. Right? For the Nets, four and one with this starting five. Scalabrini, Christich, and Collins up front. Kidd and Carter in the backcourt. Jason Collins sprained his left ankle against Toronto. And David Christich sprained his right thumb, both in there tonight. And for the 76ers, Corver, Dallenbear, and Chris Weber across the front line. Iverson and Igudala are the guards for Jim O'Brien's team. Sixers have won six of their last seven, but they are just 18 and 22 on the road. Lawrence Frank saw his team step forward in the second half on Friday night. 60 points after halftime en route to a 101 to 90 win over the Raptors. Vince Carter had 39 points. Nets out rebounded Toronto 45 to 32. Allen Iverson has been on a tear. 43 point effort in 44 minutes in a 90 to 86 win over Indiana on Friday. Allen Iverson playing at a high level, much like Vince Carter. So you got two superstars playing at the top of their games, and they're also getting a lot of help from the other guys as well. Two of the most gifted scorers in the NBA, Carter and Iverson, will duel here tonight at the Meadowlands. Officiating crew, veteran crew, Good Dick Cravetta, Ken Maurer, and Leroy Richardson agree. Now you don't get them very often. A playoff type crew. Yeah, sure, I'm sure of these guys you'll see them in the playoffs as well. D'Alembert getting ready to jump it up with Collins. Nets with a win would jump into the eighth spot in the Eastern Conference playoff chase. Nets control the tip. Yeah, Collins stole the tip there. Good reaction and like D'Alembert was ready into the hands of Carter. Shot clock at 10. Carter unable to hit on a fadeaway. And Dellenberg clears. And Igudala gets the assignment against Carter. A very good athlete and a good defender, Igudala. And as Lawrence Frank mentioned, kid dealing with Iverson to start, but it will be a team effort. Dellenberg, one-on-one with Christich. Isolation, Dellenberg. And he missed it. The collapsing defense there once he got into the paint. There's Kidd, picked up by Iverson, trying to snake his way. Scalabrini knocks it down for three. A little delay getting down the floor, much like a trailer. It wasn't a fast break situation, more of a delayed fast break, and Scalabrini just spotting up. He had 16 points and eight rebounds in that win over Toronto. Steal by Carter. Kidd leaves it for Scalabrini. Penetration to the goal. He put it over there for the bucket. Hop, skip, and a jump for Brian Scalabrini as he got a nice ward off from Kristich in the middle. And the Nets with a 5-0 lead. Iverson splits defenders. Dellen Bear, the dunk. There's the trust factor. He is so good at finding lanes, creating lanes. And once he gets that deep, willing to give it up. He leads the NBA in scoring at 30.8, but top five in assists. And second in steals. Scalabrini puts it on the floor, takes it at Corver for the deuce. Brian Scalabrini thinks he's Vince Carter. Well, you can't argue with him the way he's been playing. <laughs> he's got seven points, all of the next scoring output. Weber, no. And Scalabrini the rebound. Quick outlet, kid ahead, and it skipped out on Carter. Next felt it touched Philadelphia last. Tough call that happened so quick. The ball didn't come up. May have caught the toe of somebody, whether it was Carter or the defender. Don't know. Nets with a 7-2 lead. 
Iverson unable to turn the corner, but he can hit the fadeaway. And you see how quick he is. The kid has a hard time keeping up with him. Got help from Christich, but Iverson does a good job. King over. Answers back on a crossover move. Came right out of Mayan. Crossed him over and did a good job. Iverson throws it up. And a turnover. Kid lob. Corner. The Bruce Wayne. Iverson had nowhere to go and just threw it right to the Nets. There were no black shirts around, and then Kidd responds on the pass to Carter. And the Nets are five of six from the field. Weber able to pop inside the arc. Chris Weber still talented as a scorer. Doesn't have the same quickness, the same lift off that leg. More of a jump shooter, but he does that pretty well. Able to hit that one from about 20 feet. Kidd rims out, and it's rebounded by Weber. Iverson, cross court, Corver, that's his game, spotting up for three. Yeah, he does it very well. You've got to find him as quickly as possible. Every once in a while, he'll go in for a layup, but he'd rather step out to the three-point line, just spot up, and Iverson will find him. And both teams lighting it up. Net 71%. Philadelphia, 67%. Next lead is two. Scalabrini, outside. Carter, high arcing delivery, and Christich was pushed. D'Alembert claiming that his arms were up. Well, they were up after he had shoved. A moment ago, turnover. Nets get it to Kidd. Kidd looking up, finds Carter behind the D. alley -oop. flush. Kidd triggers in. New shot clock for the Nets. Carter curling and slamming the Statue of Liberty dunk. No defense for that as he got the step. And the help was a little late as Carter jumped over the top. 13-9. Carter with a pair of slams in the opening minutes. Carter got screened off by Weber. And Corver unable to hit. Kyle Corver, a rare two-pointer. They didn't know what to do when he found himself 15 feet, but still able to knock it down. He likes that three, likes the long distance. But he's a good shooter nonetheless from any distance. Shoots it at 40% from three-point range. Carter wants it against Iguodala. Step through. Carter off balance. A little double clutch there with one hand as Carter looking for a call, no call, but made the tough shot in the lane. Nets look determined early. Weber, short. Lead feed, Kidd racing, challenging Corver. Doesn't get the roll. Scalabrini the tip, but a foul call. Kyle Corver is hurt. Corver is on his back. See, off the miss. Scalabrini quickly to Kidd. Now, Kidd trying to turn him inside out. And Corver took the hit and hurt in the process. Last shot by Vince Carter. Watch. As he jumps over the top of the defense, they could not react quick enough. And Carter holding that ball high like Dr. J, his idol. Corver able to get up with some help from his teammates. Thrown by, by Dr. J a few mm. times. And that's what it looked like as well. One from shot. that vantage point? Yeah. Three pretty much. Down. You know, looking for help, saying, hey, guys. <laughs> You try to guard him. Where, where you posterize, though, that's the key. Uh, no, you try to stay out of that. Dr. J was such a gentleman. He didn't, he didn't want to do that. Didn't want anybody having that in their bedroom. One out of two from Kidd. And the Nets with a five-point lead. Steele, Collins ahead. Iverson fouls Kidd. Out near midcourt. Allen Iverson, his first 13 foul. Oh, Kidd got a hand on the pass here. And you see Collins will pick it off, and an Iverson trying to react. Doesn't like the call as he nudged Kidd there, trying to get out. There you see. Uh, you may say, well, is that a clear pass foul? A, Kidd didn't have the ball. B, right. Iverson was parallel with him as Kidd posts up and can't spin it in. Kick out. Scalabrini a three. Bang! Oh, that's an added bonus right there. The play of Scalabrini in the early going. 1911. Scalabrini in double digits with 10 points in the first five minutes. And this Corver underneath. Iverson wide open left. Allen Iverson. Five points from Corver. Four for Iverson. 
And a bucket for Weber and Dallimbear. That's all the scoring for Philly. Carter lost it. Iguodala, tough defender as a rookie. And Carter, short. Iverson picked up by Kidd. Kick out, Weber knocks it down. He's still very talented. 15, 18 feet as a shooter. And be underrated because you're used to seeing Chris Weber explode around the basket and post up. But he's a solid shooter. One of four current players averaging 20 points and 10 rebounds for his career. Knocked away, foul call. And we'll get a timeout. The other three, by the way, in addition to Weber, Duncan, Garnett, and Shaq. Timeout with 5.50 to play in the first. Nets lead by four. 50 mark of this first quarter. Philadelphia does make a change. Aaron McKee checks in, replacing Kyle Korver, who picked up his second personal foul. Nets will toss it in with Carter. Number eight, Aaron McKee. In for Christich. Carter will fire the three. Count. That's a feed. Uh, Iguodala caught napping a little bit as Carter got the ball back after inbounding. And Iguodala cannot get a hand up as Carter used the screen perfectly. Carter and Scalabrini have combined for 19 points. Kid on a steal. Streaking to the rim. The power of Scalabrini. Foul call. Wow. How about this call? They're going to call a jump ball. Whoa. Allen Iverson on a tie-up. What a defensive play by A.I. Wow, tremendous defense all the way around. It started with Kidd, who's been very active defensively. And you see as Iverson reaches in, they say he got the basketball. Dick Pavetta made the call. Kidd and Iverson will jump it up. Tremendous defense, both guys. Kidd trying to steal the tap. And they'll re-tap. Emphatic. Kenny Mallard. Jim O'Brien wants Philadelphia to have the ball, saying that Kidd stepped in too soon. Well, if you remember the opening tip, Collins stole the tip to begin with. Maybe that's what Jimmy O'Brien is aware of after seeing the first one. But he won't get a call. They will reach up. And they put one more second on the clock. Iverson and Kidd. With the Nets in front by seven. And this time, Iverson tips it over in the direction of Collins. And play there by... Dalibar is Collins did a good job by stepping in front and being more aggressive. Carter step back. There is a huge play. Iverson wins the tip, is tipping to his big man, and he just gets outfought by Collins, which ends up with a Carter getting a bucket. And it's 24 to 15. Nets penetration. Iverson has his pocket pick. Kid off to the races. McKee back. Kid takes it to the rim. Boys, he's so good and turning you inside and out. When he's coming at you, you better retreat quickly and then come at him because if you're backpedaling, you're going to get beat. Fifth net steal of this first quarter. Offensive foul. It is going to be Weber. And the first on Weber. Nets have their largest lead, 11. Look how many points they put up, Kelly. With 4.38 to go in this first quarter, they're already at 26. Well, the pace is pretty good for them, and the fact when you combine that with good shooting, you're going to get results like that. Kid fakes out Iverson, sets the feet, a three, short, follows it, and blocked by Weber. Christmas cleans it up. All right, great job in reacting around the basket, playing at a high level. Timeout, Philly. Early statement by the Nets. They lead it by 13 with 4.17 to go in the first quarter. Chance for the number eight spot on the line. Coming up tomorrow on Yes, the Yankees are back in the Bronx. Battle of the Devil Rays. Complete coverage begins at 6.30. Spiro Titus, Tri-State Quality Ford pregame. Then David Justice joins Ken Singleton and Jim Cott. He'll have the action at 7 o'clock. Yankees and Devil Rays only on Yes. What a start for Lawrence Frank's squad. 28 to 15 with 417 to go in this first Very quarter. active at the defensive end, which has enabled them to pick up the pace down the other end. Good ball movement and a lot of confidence. Play it out.
After the Philadelphia timeout, Mark Jackson, who has really hurt the Nets this season, checks in. Weber, open look, rebounded by Carter. Nets are on a 9-0 run. They are shooting it at 63%. Scalabrini, he has 10 points. Carter has 11. Kidd with five. And a foul called as Carter tried to make his move. Weber was there defensively. And Philadelphia picks up its fifth foul. See Carter come around the double screen there and curl on it. Met Weber. Weber doesn't like the call, obviously. And he's probably going to have to come out with two as he's having a discussion with Ken Mallory. And Corver already on the bench for Philly with two personal fouls. Carter nails the free throw. And now the former net, Rodney Rogers, will check in for the first time. Vince Carter, 39 points in that emotional return to Toronto. Was able to quiet the crowd on Friday night. And tonight he is energizing this capacity crowd at Continental Airlines Arena here in the first quarter. Offensive foul. It is Mark Jackson. And the frustration level is growing for Jim O'Brien and the 76 er players. Yeah, he's certainly upset. I, I've never seen so many fouls called when the ball is not even on their end of the court as far as setting screen. Doesn't make a lot of sense, and certainly the Sixers has got to figure out a way to correct that. Seventh Philadelphia turnover. The Nets with just one. Carter, the fine, Christian denial by McKee. It helped defense there on the backside. Working five on four. Christian oh. trying to get down. Iverson, he lost the ball. Here's Kidd the other way with a head of steam to the corner. Scalabrini. This man, Scalabrini, being guarded by Iverson. Kidd being guarded by Rogers. Ball movement. Kidd to Carter. Reversal. No. And Scalabrini tapped it off of Jackson. It's a play. You got to go after the ball. They were all looking around, waiting, thinking that it was going to go out of bounds. And you see, you got to try to grab that if it's available. And Jackson did not. Scalabrini makes the play. That's trying to add to what is a 15 point lead. Carter, five of nine from the field. Kick ball. Kick ball. And shot clock will stay at 19. Now, this Philadelphia team is hot as anyone in the league right now. Impressive back-to-back -back wins over Miami and Indiana on Thursday and Friday nights. Collins, a jump shot. The Nets are yet to commit a foul with under three minutes to go in the first quarter. Saw our graphic there, 7-0, and that's certainly something that doesn't sit well with Jim O'Brien. I'm sure he's going to make the referees aware of it. It's a 13 to nothing net run. McKee lines it up and hits. Aaron McKee off the bench, his first attempt of the night. 32-17, Nets. They still have 2.28 to go in this first quarter. Carter against McKee, high screen kid. Iverson looking for the steal. Switch back now, McKee on Carter. Carter, oh, brilliant, moves him to the goal. If you allow him to pound the basketball, Without getting it out of his hands, he's going to find a way to beat you. The extended run is now 23 to 8. Nets. Carter was fronting Iguodala. And a nice head and shoulder fit. Yeah, he's very athletic as well. Good job there. And the pass made the play there. Nice touch on that pass. Under two minutes to play now. First quarter. Carter. The drive. Carter rims out. And Rogers able to clear. You've got to try to find him early before he gets ahead of steam to the basket. Iverson able to track it down. Rogers open look. No way. Can't hit the three. Kid up high for the rebound. Jackson and Kristich got tied up. A little pushing and shoving coming down the floor. Maybe close by Rogers on that attempt. Kristich the dump down. Collins the finish. Collins moving. It's that made the play there. He moved without the basketball. When somebody's dribbling, don't stand and watch. And moving well, not the lumber. Yeah, we point. saw the other night. He struggled the other night as far as that movement is concerned, but still did some nice things for them down the stretch. Iverson looking to get involved. Next 36, Philadelphia 21. Iverson with six points. 
Back in. Kidd on a turnaround. Jason Kidd. That's where he can use his size against Iverson. Much stronger is Jason Kidd. The Nets with 38 first quarter points. Iverson, kick out, Iguodala. Little extra shuffle, may have gotten away with it. He had that pivot foot down. He, he takes such long strides. And that left foot, or excuse me, that right foot stayed in place as he made a tough shot off the window. But that season high for points in a quarter, 40. Happened on January 8th at Orlando. They're at 38 right now. That turnover on the over and back goes to the bench with 25.9 remaining. And Collins will join him there. Travis Best checks in along with Cliff Robinson, who did not play in the second half the other night because of a back injury. About a half second different shot clock to game clock. And Allen Iverson thinking we've got a hold for most of that clock, if not all of it. Try to keep it to this being the last possession of the quarter. Nets have a foul to give, and in fact, they are yet to commit a foul until now. Travis Best out front, dealing with Iverson. And now Philadelphia will have it with 9.7. Shot clock turned off. Still plenty of time, obviously, when you've got a player of Allen Iverson's ability to break you down. Going to look to try to get a lane and either kick or take it himself. There is Jackson, seven seconds left. Jackson, spin move, forced it up. And draws the foul with 3.4. So much for that game plan. A little surprise as Iverson never even came near the ball. Jackson going one-on-one, -on -one, able to spin and get some contact. Mark Jackson, 82% shooter. Iverson has been limited to six points. He's made all of his shots, just three attempts. Yeah, and he's played well. I mean, because he's given up the ball when he has to, uh, he's under control, not forcing the issue. It's just been the defense of the Nets and their ability to pick up the pace a little bit. And, of course, they're playing sensational offense in the first quarter. Foul on Kristich. Jim O'Brien sees his team takes its first free throw of the night with four seconds to play in this opening quarter. And I'm sure he'll comment on that to you think? who's ever near there, whether it's Dick Rivetta, Lou uh, Richardson, or Ken Noah. Maybe all three. Yes. Jackson. Cans the second. Let's have some time here. Robinson in for Kristich. And a quick jack. That's the follow. It doesn't go. And the Sixers stop playing. They made a mistake there. You've got to play all the way to the final buzzer. And Travis Best nearly burned them. Well, well, block out. I think Iverson's instincts probably told him, well, Kristich is taking a last second <laughs> shot. Well, guess what? There was still 1.1 left on the play clock. Play the entire play. Go get the rebound. Block out. Don't let it, somebody get another shot. One or the other. He didn't either. Let's reset the lineups for you. Nets have Best, Carter, Scalabrini, Robinson, and Kristich. Philadelphia with Iverson, McKee, Corver, Jackson, and Dellenbeer, and a foul on Best. Still a tough second one, uh, Ian on Best, and tough matchup there for him. As quick as Travis Best is, a little bit older, but again, you're talking about going after Allen Iverson. Nobody's that quick. 38 to 25. And he may challenge him again. There's a foul. Now the fouls are going to start accumulating. That's at Robinson, though, but uh, certainly, yeah, you're trying to cut off his lane, step out on any kind of screen situation, and you remember, hard to guard a guy like that. He takes advantage of the rules because you can't touch him on the perimeter. Field goal attempts in that first quarter. Nets had 28. Sixers had just 17. Jackson way outside. Out of his range. How about the Sixers shooting 65% in the first quarter and it's trailing by 13? Best swings it. Robinson dealing with that back injury. Here is Carter off the back end. Robinson thought about it. Ball movement. Scalabrini against the zone. Kristich, baseline delivery. Scalabrini flipping the ball over his head. He's making all the plays. And Kristich with his second field goal. The Nets, 40. Sixers, 25. Kyle Korver just want to make him put it on the floor. See if it can disrupt his rhythm. Off the mark for three. Here's Best leading the charge. They've also got to find a way to get some points on the inside. Scalabrini. Side rim on a tray. 
And McKee was able to get the angle so Scalabrini couldn't save it. Yeah, but again, almost an instance where you don't grab the rebound and the guy can save that the last second. Net 16 and 10 since the All-Star break. The turn by Jackson and unable to hit. Yeah, good move. Had a nice look at the rim, but off the uh, side iron for Jackson. There's Carter. The give to Kristich with a baby hook. Tough shot there. And Dallin Bear, not real aggressive there, looking, maybe thinking about a block shot there. And Kristich certainly has had his problems with Dallin Bear, but off to a pretty good start. Scalabrini and Carter. The two of them have matched the Sixers' offensive output. Carter with 15 points, Scalabrini with 10. And saved by Jackson there. McKee, shot clock winding down, the pull-up. And Kristich able to keep it alive for Scalabrini. Lock out there on Jackson by Kristich. Nets playing well with Kidd on the bench. Kristich, one-on-one with Dallin Bear, shows the ball. And three a three-second violation. That last move line got him in trouble there. Thinking about Dallin Bear. Remember, he has had his problems, as I mentioned before. Dallin Bear is pretty much, I say owned him, but pretty close to it as far as blocking his shot. Chris is trying to learn the rest of the league. Outside, Iverson will stroke it for two. He has everybody's number. <laughs> That's how good Allen Iverson is at scoring the basketball. In addition to the fact that he has been scoring at a ridiculous rate, he doesn't sit. He plays basically the entire game. And again, about 140 pounds soaking wet. Robinson swings it. Carter. And the box out by Jackson. Remember, too, Iverson gets to the line 10 plus times a game. So that tells you how much he takes contact. That's a three for Allen Iverson and Lawrence Frank. Has seen enough of AI. He's a machine. A timeout call by the Nets. Their lead is down to 12. It's been as large as 17. Iverson with 11 to lead the Sixers. We'll step aside. Changes for the Nets. Kidd, Plotinich, and Collins all into the game. Carter gets his first rest. There is Kidd, 10 to shoot. Swings it, Robinson, reversal to Plotinich. Six on the timer, Plotinich. And it's blocked by Corver. The defense, Corver reacting. Iverson feeling it, a three. AI, hey, that's all you have to say. Now you knew he would be hurt from. 14 points after scoring six in the first quarter. Tough man to hold down. He hasn't missed. He's six of six from the field. Kid, fade away. Count. Jason Kidd. Good job. Got himself squared and set. Jason Kidd from 15. And that ends at 8 0 Philadelphia run. Carter on the bench with 15 points. Double up. Collins there cutting him off. Lob. That's high for Zellenberry. Able to come down with it. He's got great wingspan. And short on the turnaround. Loose ball on the deck. Corver able to come up with it. Cross court, Iverson. New clock for Philadelphia. I don't know if Iverson recognizes it. Dallin Bear a fade away. Iverson thought he was fouled by Beth. Nick Pavetta says it was clean. Still a bad job, though, not knowing the clock situation. Dallin Bear's shot was not a good one, and he had plenty of time left. Kidd looking for some motion on offense, sends Plotinich away from the ball. Now Kidd, the jumper. And no white jerseys underneath. Sam Dallin Bear, that last play when he caught the alley-oop. Took it away from the basket rather than towards it. Iverson short follows it and saves to the wrong team. Kid push it on the move. Kid the cutter best leaves it in. Travis best with a little slide of hand. Again, kid running at you. You cannot try to stay with him. You've got to get back and then let him come out and attack him because kid will just attack you consistently. Dallin Bear continues to take jumpers on his hat. Samuel Dallin Bear will shoot a pair. You see, in transition, Corver's got to try to get all the way back first, even if he has to force a jump shot. But once you allow Kidd to get that deep and just pick who he wants to pass to, you're going to be in trouble. Kelly, third foul on Travis Best, which means Vince Carter, after a very short breather, Heads back onto the floor. Dallin Bear, no good on the free throws. No, not a very good free throw shooter. Sam Dallin Bear really having his problems this year at, what, 50-something percent. Actually, we'll give him 60. 
59.7. That's 60. Yeah. Well, now maybe not after the first miss. Now he's 60. You usually don't give him the benefit. No, no, no. I do. You're no. going out on a limb. If man. it's .6, yeah, I know, but four .5. above. Now .5. That's that's debatable. You got issues, just like those that's... condiments. But pardon me. <laughs> I think you need to fill people in on that. Nah. Defensive three seconds the call. And a free throw. Ketchup, no, mayonnaise, no, mustard. No, I don't need to catch you up, mustard. Yeah. Salads, all that. Relish. I'm different. I, I recognize that. I've learned to live with it. You're not alone. I know where you're coming from. I see it in my family. Carter at the line. 80%. Illegal defense the call. Jason Kidd wants to make sure that the Nets get the call. Look, he's pointing him out. He's pointing him. He's got to be out here. So he's running the show, he's scoring, he's dishing, he's rebounding, and he's also repping. Plumbing it to three. Chan taps it out for Carter. And a reset. Lob. Extra feed. Collins in heavy traffic. Kid swings it. Robinson is open. That's a three. Count. Those kill you. If you're Philadelphia, second and third opportunities kill you. The Nets, we saw, take advantage of those very well. Nets have built the lead back up. Iverson with the miss. Weber can't hit. Delambert foul on Kidd. And the 14 foul against the Nets. Rodney Buford will check in and replace Zoran Plotinich. Lawrence Frank looking for some minutes from that spot from either Plotinich or Buford, and he's going to go off his instinct on whoever is performing. Sometimes game situations force you. That's why you always have to be ready. You never know how the game is going to go. You've got to be able to re react accordingly. And you know what? Rodney Buford was ready in the fourth quarter the other night. Not from a scoring standpoint, but played solid enough D against Toronto and rebounded the ball well. Didn't do anything to disrupt matters for the Nets. And sometimes you know, that's what the coach is looking for. Oh, well, yeah, you've got to be under control. And uh, you always have to be ready, Ian. You never know when your number is going to be called. You can't just sit over there thinking it's not going to be my day or my night. You've got to be ready because your number may be called. Corver comes to the ball. Jumper on the way. And rebounded by Kidd. Tough attempt there for Corver. Kidd is flirting with a triple-double already in the first half. Carter. Able to back out of the double team. Takes it at Corver. Off the window. Put English on it. And it's rebounded by Delambert. Here's Iverson. Penetration. Can't stop that. He'll go to the line. Oh, he wants that bucket as well. Iverson probably upset with himself because the 20 probably should have made despite taking a hit. And the foul on Buford. Nets are over the limit. And we've got a timeout with the Nets up 16. And concise action of young Lauren Grossell. Yeah, that's a good babysitter there. And I'm sure she'll earn a big tip. What are babysitters getting these days? Um, I'm not sure I'm well, on that, but it, I'm sure it's pretty significant. No, it's significant. It's yeah. double digits per hour. I was going to say, I was going to start there. Start there, and you might have to go up a couple of bucks. Now, Lauren might double that start there. Jim O'Brien's team is shooting 44% from the field. She may be on the payroll now. <laughs> Good job. Nice story. Philadelphia is 3 of 15 from the field in the second quarter, but they are getting to the free throw line a bit more. And remember, that was after a 65% first quarter. Kid to Robinson from the elbow. Close to stay there. Delabert came over to double. Doubling is fine, but I don't think you come off there because it's Cliff Robinson and pretty good shooter. You got to come off someone else. Now the zone defense the Nets went with the other night in the second half against Toronto really paid off dividends. We'll see how Philadelphia handles it. Delabert. And rebounded by Couch, where he's got to get stronger inside. He was underneath the basket and forced another step beyond that. Robinson, front rim. And Delambert looking to clear. He does to Iverson. Almost didn't see Kidd coming up behind quickly. Under five minutes to go in this first half. Iverson draws the double, and Weber cannot hit. And Weber's got to make those shots with some kind of consistency, getting good looks. He is two of seven from the field, just four points for the five-time All-Star, Chris Weber. Well, that one's in his, or was in his rhythm. And kickball. kickball, they'll put the shot clock Reset at 14. Shot clock to 14 seconds. Nets at 52% shooting. They are out-rebounding the Sixers, 20 to 17. 
Just three turnovers for the Nets. Carter against Corbin. Stutter step to the goal. Carter lost the ball. And goaltending. Stuck with the play, and it turns into a deuce. Again, reacting quicker than Philadelphia is. Even though the shot didn't get to the basket, Vince got the ball back and quickly went up before the defense could react, and Dale and Bear made a mistake in goaltending that. And the Nets have their largest lead, 18. Iguodala and Weber out front. Corver against Buford, a former 76er. Iverson, ball fake, so quick on a scoop to the hoop. Tip in, Weber, no. And Robinson with a lead feed for King. Finds Buford. Can't it from the side. Now you wait for your opportunity there. And Kidd made one for Buford. The Nets are up by 20, and Kidd has nine assists to go along with his nine points. Offensive foul as Weber forces the issue. That's number three. Weber not happy, but again, you can only bang so much. You see Collins holding his ground. Yeah, sure he flopped. But you've got to anticipate that as an offensive player as well. Don't give him that much contact. No, it's there. But don't emphasize as he did there, and then he was baited by Collins in the end. Nets are on a 10-2 run. Collins squares, and it's rebounded by Dellenbear as Jackson comes in to replace Weber. Iverson, 16 points for Philly. Post up, Dellenbear. Robinson there defensively, and Dellenbear puts it in. He's got to be stronger. He's got to put on some weight. He can be a pretty good offensive player, but he gets pushed around a little too much. We know he can play defense, but he's got to be able to hold his own once he gets that deep. Attended St. Patrick's High School in Elizabeth, New Jersey. Buford drains another. Back-to-back -back jump shots. Rodney Buford. He has rediscovered his offense, and the Nets once again with that 20-point lead. Every guy wants to contribute, certainly to get the opportunity, particularly in big games. Iverson for Jackson, nine to shoot. Miss Corver is open. And Corver drills the track. About a second or two late, but Corver does a nice job of staying open for an extended time and knock down the triple. Eight points for Kyle Corver. Down to 2.38 to go in this first half. Nets 58, Sixers 41. Carter against Corbin. Oh, he loves this matchup. Carter, step to the rim. Doesn't get the roll. Fires and slams with the purpose. Great job, great enthusiasm by Vince Carter there. Staying with it. And it didn't close down quickly as he gets his own miss. He has 20 first half points coming off a 39 point performance on Friday night. Entry fee. Jackson spinning. Doesn't get the bank. Long rebound to Kidd. Kidd running one on four. Oh, star step on a double clutch. He actually switched hands in the process. Last second went up righty and then switched to the left. Iverson gets around Kidd, draws the foul. It's Kidd from the backside. Number two on Jason Kidd. Timeout with the Nets up by 19. Vince Carter follows. And yes, that is a man's jam. 148 to play. First half. Including a 2005 Ford Focus, courtesy of Mawa Ford. Also, if you take the New Jersey Turnpike, know that the toll is on the Nets for one hour leading up to the game. If you exit at 16W, they'll pay the toll for you. Tickets start at just $15. Screech your seats, get your tickets right now, njnets.com, or call 1-800-4-NBA-TIX. Allen Iverson at the free throw line. He is two for two tonight. 16 points, now with 17. Doing a great job. One shot! Ian Eagle, Kelly Trapuca, the rest of our Yes Network crew. With a win, the Nets would move into the eighth spot of the Eastern Conference playoff chase in a tie with Cleveland, but they own the tie break against the Cavaliers after winning the season series. Cavs fell to Detroit earlier today. 
in a game where the Pistons came from behind to win, trailing by 12 at the break. Larry Brown was going with mostly second unit players in that second quarter. Carter driving, puts it in, and a foul! Vince Carter, the creativity! Falling to the floor, Carter gets it to drop. On the way down, Vince Carter will turn the corner and you see, takes a little bump and that manages to still get that shot up to the rim and hits the deck. Vince Carter shoot an extra push there. You saw he had it in one hand and able to get the other hand on it as well. Gets the roll, 23 first half points and the Nets lead at 63-43. Down to a minute, 27 to go. Nets have matched their largest point production in a half. Rogers up top, Iguodala is a high flyer. He is, but the pass was perfect from Rogers. Couldn't have thrown up there any better. Down to a minute, 10 left. Second quarter, Carter to the cutter, and Collins unable to catch it. Buford goes for it, and last and touch, Philadelphia. Missed opportunity there, because they were going to have a four-on-one break and nobody went after the basketball. Vince Carter a moment ago, you see him, as I said, ball stripped nearly and had to get the other hand on it to get it up to the rim. Great effort. Carter against McKee. One minute left in the half. Isolation. Carter, a little bump. Ball movement. Plenty of time to work with on the shot clock. 12. Kidd swings it. Robinson, that's a two. And a long rebound to Kidd. Fires a pass to Buford for the jam. Now that's killing the Sixers. The second and third opportunity for the Nets have just broken the back and the spirit of the Sixers. 11 first half assists for Jason Kidd. Nets have put up a season high 65 points and a half. And a blocking foul on Collins. That is his first personal. Off the miss, you see, comes out long, and Kidd in the right place finds the wide open Rodney Buford. Collins a moment ago, not square. Picks up the personal on the block. At the line, Andre Iguodala. And he hits on the first. Stay tuned. Heineken at the half is coming up. Still Adidas joining us tonight here at the Meadowlands. First half highlights, statistics. And he'll show you some of the action from that Cleveland-Detroit game in case you missed it earlier today. A game that has allowed the Nets to start thinking playoffs on a legitimate level. It's tangible. You can touch it. A win here. And they assume the eighth spot in the East. Kid outside. Collins. Jump shot? No. Buford trying to keep it alive. Kid gets a piece. And Philadelphia can hold for one. Will they? They won't. Rogers. A near turnover, now they do. Kidd ahead for Buford, seven seconds left. Buford trying to find Kidd. Offensive foul. And it's Rodney Buford picking it up. Now go back to the last play. The Sixers could have held for one, but I thought it's okay if you have an opportunity for a layup, which they had, but Rodgers did not catch the ball. And the Nets trying to hold for one. Commit the offensive foul to give the Sixers another opportunity with under five. They want to pressure the ball. Iverson against Kidd. Throws it up. No good. At the horn. Months that just doesn't all of a sudden blend you back in, but certainly Richard Jefferson is eager to play. At Philadelphia, turns it over to start play in the second half. Aaron Pass, and not the way Jim O'Brien had drawn it up to start the second. Nets 22 and 17 at home. They are 35 and 28 with Jason Kidd in the lineup. In the month of April, Kidd averaging over 18 points, just under 10 rebounds, and right around nine and a half assists per game. Clock needs to be reset. Right now, only five seconds came off. I'm not quite sure if that's possible. Well, I think Herb Turetsky just wanted a little face time. Official score? Yeah. There's Herb. He likes to be coddled every once in a while. Really? Of course, he's been here forever, and he never misses a game. I did not know about that side of his personality oh, that you're bringing to life. You know, he's just one of those guys that you can rely on. I just like the sun coming up every morning. 
Well, the seventh spot in the East is still something the Nets are keeping an eye on. Philadelphia can clinch a playoff spot with a victory here. But a loss, and all of a sudden, it's even tighter at the bottom of the Eastern Conference standings. Nets interaction a half game behind Cleveland. And a game and a half or make that two games behind Philadelphia with a chance to cut it to one. 65 to 47. 11 46 is what they put on the clock here in the third quarter. Nets have not been at the 500 mark since two and two to start the season. It's been a climb all season long, difficult, but not how long it takes you, whether you can get there or not. Now they just tacked on three more seconds, 11.49. And we are about ready to resume. Nets 65 points in that first half. Most points that they put up in a half this season. Kidd using the Carter screen. He ties up Iguodala. They're locked arm in arm, Iguodala and Carter. Takes a peek at the clock, 10 to shoot. Carter forced into a fadeaway, and he knocks it down. It's a tough shot from Vince, but one we've become accustomed to seeing. Creates some space and a little floater as he jumps sideways almost. 25 now for Carter. Iguodala off penetration, Weber is open. And can't hit the long two-pointer. Scalabrini the board. I don't understand why Weber has not tried to get inside and post up a little bit. I know he doesn't have the same explosiveness, but he's got such long arms, he can certainly score down there. Kidd almost able to bank it through. Christich offensive rebound. Corver jarred it loose and unable to save. Oh, Christich out working everybody inside. Again, Dallin Bear not playing with much enthusiasm down there as far as going after rebounds, and Christich just outworked them. Christic, six points, four boards. D'Alembert has scored five points and has grabbed seven rebounds. Over to Carter. He's put up 25. Carter. Off balance attempt. Corver going the other way. Using the D'Alembert screen, Corver gives up his dribble. Tight defense, Carter. Weber, another jumper. And it rims out. D'Alembert this time tracks down the offensive board. Corver finds the cutter. Iverson for such a gritty pass. That pass had to be perfect stoppage of play here. Maybe some more clock issues. And that's the way it looks. Dick Pavetta heading back to the scorer's table. Watch this pass here. And that is not an easy pass. He made it look easy. That's about a 20-foot bounce pass, and it had to be perfect to lead Iverson. Corver did a nice job. Allen Iverson now has gone over the 20-point mark for the 56th consecutive game. A scoring machine. And again, not easy on a night-to-night -night basis to have to be there to score each and every night because the defense is concentrating on you and he still doesn't. He is listed at six foot, 165 pounds. You say no way. <laughs> yeah. Christich, back in. And yeah, trying to feed pass. Collins. Yeah, he threw it through right in his shoelaces. Big men don't like it down there. That is turnover number six. Iguodala picked up by Scalabrini. Got to get something from Weber. Weber turns and fires over Collins. And he can't buy one. He is two of 11. Kid makes a cut. Back in. Scalabrini thought about it. And the pull-up doesn't go. Christich battling. And tracked down by Iverson. Lost it for a moment. Can he pick it up? He can. Yeah, he can pick it up. Just can't dribble again. Eagle Dollar. Allen Bear was settling for jumpers in that first half. This time, a spin move doesn't pay off. That didn't even look nice at all. Net 67. Philadelphia 49. Early stages of this second half. Phillies missed their last three opportunities and an opportunity also to close the gap. Christich is open. And the bank shot doesn't go. On a bounce to Iverson. Kidd picks him up. Iverson, so good at locating spots on the floor that he can free himself. Look, he's tremendous. He's just not getting any help from some of his teammates, in particular, Chris Weber. 
Iverson is 8 for 13. He's got 22 points. Nets more than willing to trade baskets, though. It's Carter finds Scalabrini. Corner three. Got it. That's good job by finding Scalabrini. Corner actually did a nice job coming over, cut off the spin back by Carter, but asked so much to try to recover 10, 12 feet to get out to Scalabrini. Iverson answers. It's a one-man show right now for Philadelphia. Yeah, you'd almost get the sense that he he's the type of guy that's so tough he'd be willing to take on all five by. He's got 24 for Philly. Carter against Corver. Tight defense on the outside. Carter, long three. Uh, it's Carter on the money for long distance. Shoots that with ease. That's what's so amazing. I mean, he shoots that like it's a 10-footer. Such confidence from beyond that strike. And that's what it all it, it, it is, is confidence. If you have that much confidence in your ability to shoot the ball, it makes the shot a little easier. Rims out for Iverson. You can't go up there thinking, I might make it. You have to go in there thinking, I'm going to make it. Carter's second three-pointer of the night. He's got 28. Carter with Iguodala. Collins is open. Oh, that newfound range for Jason Collins. Follows it. Gets tied up and out of bounds. Last touch. No. Are they going to jump it up with Weber? You see that Corver at the end of the play threw over the backboard in the hoop. It's the last play here off Came off Weber's Weber. head. And they will give it to the Nets as it should. Carter catch and shoot on a high arcing delivery. Watching two great scorers here in Carter since he's been a net and Iverson all season long. And that is a new net record for 30 point games in a season. Vince Carter with his 23rd. Nets are 18 and 4 when Carter scores 30 or more. He just topped Bernard King's mark. A good job here. You see off the end line out of bounds. A little screen come to the corner. And Quick shot. So the team record for Vince Carter. Chris Weber, they just keep on shooting. Chris, you gotta make one of those. I mean, love to make a living out of shooting 15-foot jump shots, but not for him tonight. And Bavetta blows the whistle. Another clock issue potentially, let's see. Weber has missed on his last eight field goal attempts. And I'd say at least six or seven of them have been right at that spot we've talked about just above the foul line. And the numbers on Carter, number 23, 30 plus point games, topping the previous high of Bernard King, Super John Williamson on that list, Stefan Marbury, and Mike Newland. My personal favorite. Newland. Yeah. That's your guy. Yeah, he's just oozes of that toughness, gritty. Gym rat. Yeah. Like the look too. Like the word oozes. Anytime you can work that in, and you did. 75-53 nets. Seem to get the clock in order. Yeah, we get a stop as you play every 15, 20 seconds. Gives us a chance to banter back and forth. Carter way outside. There's Carter. Fade away. And it's rebounded by Delavan. Arms so long. His reach. He's got nine boards. Weber inside, and that's from a much closer distance. He felt he was fouled. And that's the type of shot he's got to get. And this is getting ridiculous. The clock again a problem. Lawrence Frank complaining, hey, you can't stop a fast break. Get a look at problems here. Keep an eye on the shot clock. And now it stays on 24. And now goes to 23, 22, 21, 21. Timeout. Well, a timeout taken with 642 to play in this third quarter. And select your 2005-2006 net season tickets today. For full season tickets, sign up for the early bird payment plan. Receive an authentic autograph net jersey signed by your choice. Kid, Carter, or Jefferson, pay your account in full. During the early bird period, you'll get all three jerseys. Plus, a chance to win a trip to see the Nets Summer League team in Vegas. Or you can secure your half-season plan, receive an official NBA basketball signed by Vince Carter. Call the Nets right now, one 800 7 
NJ Nets. Capacity crowd here at Continental Airlines Arena. They have seen the Nets put on an offensive show. 647 mark of the third and the Nets 75, the Sixers 53. Well, the Sixers give up an average of 100 points per game and certainly uh, they're well beyond that here thus far. There is Collins way outside. Hopefully the clock issues have been taken care of. Kidd against Anderson. High screen, Carter. Only time will tell. I like that. Carter driving, and he's fouled. Vince Carter will shoot two. And a chance to add to the Nets' lead as Iguodala is collared with a personal. See Carter on the drive there again, similar to that shot that he got off where he had to regather. Vince able to get that one up. He is four for four from the line, a 15-point first quarter. And now has eight in the third. He haven't even hit the midway point as Iguodala sits. Aaron McKee checks in. Also, we see John Salmons for the first time. And, Kelly, you and I were both surprised that we did not see Willie Green in that first half for Phil. Yeah, Willie really Green can cause some matchups because he's has scoring ability, plus he's he's big, he's a strong guy, and uh, you know, he's had some big games when Iverson hasn't been able to play. One out of two for Carter, he's got 31. Iverson doing it himself. Allen Iverson knocks down the three-pointer. He has 27 points. The rest of the Sixers have combined for 29. I can't give him enough credit, the fact that game like this where they're down big and he just keeps fighting and fighting and finding a way to score. Kristich looking to go high-low. Scalabrini in a mismatch with Iverson. Collins, no good. Scalabrini tips the ball and knocked it out left. Yeah, nearly outworking the Sixers again on the interior and Jimmy O'Brien's going to take a timeout. 549. Nets still have two games remaining and you can catch the action on Tuesday and Wednesday night on WLNY TV. Make sure you check your local listings for the channel number in your area. Nets and Wizards on Tuesday night wrapping up the regular season home schedule here at Continental Airlines Arena. Then on the road Wednesday night, second half of the back-to-back -back, and a game that could mean a spot of the postseason for the Nets as they meet the Celtics on WLNY. Yeah, both of those games are tough. I mean, you know, Washington with those three scores, not many teams have three guys that ability. Jamison, Arenas, and Hughes, and of course Boston, uh, you know, probably wants a little payback. They were here a couple weeks ago. Well, Nets have to play two playoff teams. Meanwhile, Philadelphia has Milwaukee and Atlanta at home to wrap up their season. Two non-playoff teams. Delamere swings it. After the timeout, McKee is intercepted by Scalabrini. And that's going to be turnover number 13. His communication with Weber there put his left arm out, but then he moved, and McKee threw it to where he was. Kid, Carter, and contact Scalabrini. He'll probably get called for the shove here. He does. See Scalabrini, shove. Weber tripped into Weber, knocked Weber down. Whatever it goes against Brian. And that is his first personal. Seventh net turnover. Token pressure here. Forcing the ball out of Iverson's hands as Philadelphia oh, is in find the a way to get it back. Salmons through the lane. McKee saves. Iverson a three. Rebounded by Carter. Let's give the update on the numbers here. Carter has 31. Scalabrini has 13. Kidd with nine points, 12 assists, and six boards. Neither team shooting it well in this third quarter as the Nets cough it up again. Good hands there on the double team by Salmons and Iverson. And Weber finally connects. Yeah. Hasn't been a good shooting night for Chris Weber, but again, when you have opportunities, you gotta keep shooting. Maybe he'll turn it around and go on a streak. You need one to start. Six points now travel. for Weber, six points. And a turnover as Kristich is called for travel. Again, sensing Dallenbear. I think he, Kristich has Dallenbear on the mind. 
and for good reason. He's an excellent shot blocker, great length, and one too many steps by Nanak. 76-58. Nets turn it over five times in the first half. They already have four turnovers here in this second half. Lawrence Frank stating his case to Leroy Richardson after the travel called on Christich. Running conversation one way by Lawrence. Christich shows help defense and Weber slams and not the same guy that we once knew going to the hole, but that was effective. Yeah, but that's also what we're used to seeing from Chris Weber as far as getting something on the inside. Maybe not as powerful as we talked about, but certainly he can still be effective down low. Nets have to maintain focus here. Carter, short, Scalabrini stabs at it. And hit the rim, Ryan. Shot clock doesn't reset. Scalabrini, tip ball, Collins. And Philadelphia's got it. Whistle stops play. Philadelphia called them a foul. Jackson upset. Elbow to Vince Carter. And so Jackson wanted to go over and talk to Dick Bavetta about it, saying I didn't do it. But maybe we have a picture that says he does. Maybe we don't. We'll try it. Get a look. Well, he did something. Yeah, he shoved off him, and Vince reacting. <laughs> Emphatically there, but he's all right. It's a seven-nothing Philly run. Nets have led by as many as 23, and we still have 3:35 to go in this third quarter. Nets looking to execute in the half court. Ball movement to Carter against McKee. Carter to the goal. Plus one. Chance for three. Now, when you defend Vince Carter, you've got to get to him before he spins because he's so effective at beating the double team. Weber picks up his fourth, and you see he's late. If you can get to Vince Carter, once you force him and cut off his pass, you know he likes to spin. That's when you close because you can force him either into a turnover or an offensive foul, but if you don't get there quick enough, he's going to win the battle. Weber to the bench and Carter at the line. 33 points and seven rebounds. And that one runs out. He's missed two in a row now. 78 to 60. Iverson driving. And almost got the roll. He is going to the line. Allen Iverson, who can cut on a dime. How about the strength, too? Yeah, he changes direction, and there someone reaches in. He's still able to pull it away from the defense and get a shot up and nearly make it as well. And a technical foul. It is going to be on Iverson. What he's that upset about because he's actually going to the line, but AI upset probably about upset about something that happened earlier. And once Dix tells you it's it, you better stop. And he is still barking as Carter misses another. He's got to stop because he doesn't want to get thrown out of the game. Now, even though they're trailing big, you've got to be able to stay in. Allen Iverson said something at that moment that caught Dick Pavetta's attention. Well, he's actually arguing with Leroy Richardson, and Dick Pavetta says, I don't want you talking to my guy, and he calls the technical foul on Richardson's behalf. Put it that way. Iverson, a masterful performance on Thursday in that win over Miami, logged 53 minutes and scored 38 points, dished out 16 assists, one out of two from the line, and Kidd's got the rebound. That is his seventh to go along with 12 assists and nine points. And then 24 hours later, you think he's dead tired, doesn't have anything left in the tank, and what's he do? He scores for you. Yep. Kidd hands to Carter. Long three. Rebounded. Scalabrini, pump fake, and a foul call. And Scalabrini's going to shoot two when we come back. And then block out, and they come paid the price. Man. Nice job.
A scoring battle tonight between two of the best the NBA has to offer. Allen Iverson and Vince Carter, but the important numbers Aside from the individual stats, 78-61 in favor of the Nets with 2.59 to go in the third. That's Gallabrini misses from the line. Carter has scored 33. Allen Iverson has put up 28. And the Nets now 6 of 11 from the line as Gallabrini has it rim out. They've now missed five in a row at the strike. and come back and haunt you in a, any type of ball game. Iverson, the runner. And Scalabrini able to secure it. Yeah, Rodgers was there for Philadelphia. Didn't quite get his hand on it. Battling three other nets for that rebound. Tenth rebound for Scalabrini. Carter fires and connects a three. He got himself set. Defense late in getting out. Vince makes it look easy. And 36 points for Carter. Nets are undefeated since the All-Star break when Carter scores 30 or more. That's been the magic number. Yeah, it's also a lot of responsibility. It sure is. To rely on him having 30 every night. Jackson sticks the jumper. He's asking a lot, but he's responded. Give him that. 81-63 for Jackson. His first field goal. He's got four points. Collins allows Kidd to cut through. Now Robinson continues to curl. Finds Carter. Fade away. And scores. And that's against a pretty good defender in Aaron McKee. And interesting that Philadelphia is matching up with Iverson against Scalabrini, trying to pressure more of Jason Kidd. But right now it's Carter. 38 for Vince. And a foul on a reach hit. 13 foul against the Nets, and that is going to be number three on Jason Collins. Christich will check back in, 139 to go in this third quarter. So Collins exits with four points, two rebounds. Christich enters with six points and six boards. Salmons, Philadelphia native. Rodgers, a three. It's a shot he made a living on when he played for Boston a couple of years ago. Scalabrini saved for the wrong team. No. Salmon, short, kid, running. And it ricochets off of Carter. And it's traffic there. Now a break opportunity for Philly. Salmon's to the rim. And a foul on Christich. Made it Christich. He's charged with his third. I love how Dick Pavetta takes over. When it's time to take over, as we get a look at this play and the foul. John Simon's two shots. Actually give it to Chris. This kid actually hit him first, but Dick Pavetta then went over to the Nets bench and just turned around and faced him and said, whoa, whoa, I've got things handled. Well, in addition, Dick has such a strong rapport with players and coaches throughout the league, and that's after years and years of service and also his demeanor. He's got a great personality. And I do think that that can diffuse situations if it gets tight. Obviously, if a coach is upset, he's going to offer his opinion. Against anybody, but what Dick commands is respect. And I think all the players know how long and how much time he's been in this league and the time he's put in. He's as good an official as there is, and there is respect there, and the players have to respect that fact. Travis Best in for Jason Kidd. One minute to go in the third. Scalabrini, tip ball. Christich had it strict. Put it down there, which, again, he's worked tremendously on and done a nice job all season long, but that time put it down. Iverson. And the leader doesn't go. Christich, he got walloped by Rodgers, who was met by Scalabrini. And a loose ball foul on Rodney Rodgers. Sixers still had one to give. So the Nets will take over with 45.9. First team foul for the final two minutes and four. Nets have best Scalabrini, Robinson, Carter, and Christich on the floor for the waning moments of this third quarter. Again, that was a missed opportunity for Philadelphia to close the gap heading into the fourth quarter. And Iverson, you know, shaking his head, thinking I should have made that, but he thinks he should make every shot. Robinson, spin. Shot clock at 13. Carter, back to a cut. Robinson, unable to finish. Great feed, though. Got to finish, Cliff. Got a 
six and a half second difference shot clock to game clock. Really should try to use as much of this as possible. Jackson runs into Robinson. Oh, he was devoured by four nets on the inside. That's collapsing defense. You've got to give it up. Somebody's open. You're going to have your pick of three or four. Carter looks at the clock. Five seconds left. Carter makes his move. Carter in and out. And Rodgers will toss it up. Three-quarter court. Oh, almost went out. And again, everybody stop. 83 to 65 as we go to the fourth. Vince has carried a lot on his shoulders since he become a net. And he's delivered most of the time. Vince Carter again. Scoring at will. Sometimes making it look easy. And doing it in a variety of ways, moves, and shots. Vince Carter. Fantastic. Carter, 15 of 29 from the field. 38 points, 8 rebounds for Vince. Getting his attempts, 29, that's a lot. Using the Robinson screen, bump from Rogers. Scalabrini's open and can't hit the three. Rebounded by Carter. Those have killed the Sixers all evening long. Off the skip pass, Robinson feeds down low. Kristich, no down up there. Kristich should be... I thought he'd feel a little more comfortable. Uh, missed on the baby hook. Iguodala spinning inside. And it rims out. Iguodala looking for a whistle. Doesn't get one. Pistons beat the Cavaliers 90 to 87 earlier today. Setting up this scenario for the Nets. A win. And they take over the number eight seed in the Eastern Conference playoff chase with two games to play after tonight. Carter, short, and Rodgers comes up with it. So the Nets have Best, Robinson, Carter, Scalabrini, and Kristen. Jackson turns, and he's fouled. Good job there by Simons and Jackson. As Jackson got excellent position, kept the ball high, took on a double team, and able to muscle that up. He'll go to the line for two. Kidd, Buford, and Collins will all check in as Christich is charged with his fourth foul. And Christich will sit with six points and seven rebounds. And Vince Carter to the bench with 38 points. To rest that arm a little bit. 15 of 30. Excellent percentage at 50%. But we said before, it's a lot of shots. Jackson, 82% shooter. Two of two tonight. Free throw shooting for Big Man. Excellent in fact. Carter's career highs in field goal attempts, 36 in a game. And field goals made, 20. He's at 15 for 30 right now. That's an 83%. I mentioned that before, but it's been solid and consistent all season long. Another Philadelphia native. A couple of them on the Sixer team between Jackson and Salmons and Aaron McKee. It's 83-66. Kid. He's got nine points, 13 assists, and nine rebounds. Almost assured of a triple-double. Buford hand in his face. And the net settle. Good defense there. Made it tough for Buford. Iverson giving best a workout. Yeah. Rogers driving and the flip goes down. Not an easy shot there, Rodney Rogers on the move. He was perfect. It's a 15-point game. Nets have never trailed here tonight. Two minutes gone by in the fourth. And the Nets looking for their first points. Jump shot doesn't go. Knocked outside. Robinson, he can't put it in. The few times they've had second chance opportunities and didn't connect. Iguodala, baseline, and a foul call on the floor. Philadelphia inching back into it. They'll have it on the side at the 9.39 mark. I was a little surprised by the call because I thought they'd give him a two-shot foul. He did not dribble again. He was bumped, but he continued on. Actually did a good job getting a shot up, but Kenny Maurer did not give it to him. 
And Iguodala a little upset about that. And the fourth foul on Collins. Nets yet to convert in this fourth quarter. And another foul. If it's Collins, it's five. And it is. So now Christus will come back off the bench. Yeah, let me just say the only reason I can think of that he not give him that shot is Iguodala. At the end of that, if you notice where he was, attempted the shot from behind the backboard, which technically cannot be a shot because he can't shoot from behind the backboard. So that may be the reason why he didn't get those two free throws. Philadelphia trying to climb back into it with a shot clock at seven. Weber back in there against Kristich, and the jumper goes down. Just thinking of when he used to be able to take people off the dribble like that. That position would have been very difficult for Kristich, but Rich Weber having to uh, get through a major knee problem. Best feeding the post. Which position. But Kristich can't get it to drop, and the Nets cannot get a bucket in this fourth quarter. Iverson the drive. Iverson stutter step for two. Puts the seat fine space where there is no. Lawrence Frank wants a timeout. The lead is down to 11. Nets fans give it up for you, Nets. Philadelphia on a 7 0 run. And a timeout taken. Don't go anywhere. 8.53 to play. Allen Iverson able to score on that drive to the rim. He knows he probably got away with one. Yeah, one, two, three. They have to step, but you know what? Everybody walks in the NBA. That's the perception, and even Allen knows it sometimes. But how many times did Michael Jordan probably walk? How many times did Patrick Ewing walk? And sometimes they miss it. But you know what? Great score, and sometimes those guys get the benefit of the doubt. Nets have to get on the board here. Nice cut. Kid to Christich. Reverses for the deuce. And it, it made by Kid's cut, back cut. Good job in beating the defense and then giving it up quickly to the open man. Philadelphia had outscored the Nets 7-0 in the quarter. Iverson long three. Carter has got the rebound. And that is his tenth. Kid back in. Finds Christich baseline. Callan. And just like that, the Nets go back in front by 15 on back-to-back -back buckets for Nated Christich. That was over Weber. Did not get any lift to distract Christich. And nobody home on that feed. Last touch by the Nets. Christich now with 10 points and 7 rebounds. As he tries to finish off the season. Averaging double figures in points is at 9.8. Iguodala. He's got to come to the ball. Outside. The drive. Rogers knocked away. Scalabrini the same. Here's Kidd the other way. Robinson driving. Dish. Christich. And it brings in. The next advance with the bell. Good passing. Unselfish play. And the extra pass gets you a layup. A timeout from Lawrence Frank, settling things down. Nets getting on the same page and executing. Christich has scored six straight. And remember, that play started with the hustle from Scalabrini at the other end. Weber bumping bodies and a jump up. That is exactly what I've been saying all game long. He can be effective down there. He just hasn't been willing to go down there and score. He has made his last four attempts from the field. Kid, a back hit. The fadeaway goes, and Kidd is now one rebound shy of a triple-double. No one home, and Kidd says, I'll do it myself. 11 points, 15 assists for Jason Kidd. He's got nine boards. Weber feeding Corver. That's not usually his area on the floor. A fake foul call. And Christich on a touch foul, number five on Nainit. You always wonder when plays lead to scores down at the other end. Well, here's an indication. If he doesn't hustle Brian Scalabrini, the Nets don't get a layup. And that's just a little will and guts right there from Brian Scalabrini. Iverson driving, Kidd takes it away. And tripped up by Iverson. Kid with a smile on his face. Iverson knew what he was doing. Kid's so good, and when you bring this ball down at the last minute, he gets beat on the plate, but he's very good 
at sensing before you make your move, you've got to bring it down. He's very good at reaching in and knocking it away or taking it away. 16th Philadelphia turnover. Never quits on a play. Kidd driving. Denial by McKee. And the Nets will retain. Allen Iverson is yet to spend any time on the bench tonight. He's played all 42 minutes. He wouldn't know what to do over there. <laughs> so you sit back, watch the game. He just can't do it. Sometimes he just he can't do it. Carter to Christich. Scalabrini almost grabbed his career high tying 11th rebound. Iverson. And he's going to the line. Scary when he comes at you. you know, we know how it is with Jason Kidd coming at you. Allen Iverson. About the same. Iverson will shoot a pair now. He's five of six. He's got 30 points, seven assists. And tack on another point for AI. Now if the Sixers were say 50 wins. Have a hard time not important for this guy is how we play. I put him third. I actually sent my ballot in today. I've got a few to, to work on. Need some help? Uh, I'll chat with you. Uh, kid looking for Christich. And the knock away. Feelings on rookie of the year. Ooh. <laughs> nice steal from Scalabrini. Too much space between Aaron See, McKee and the receiver. I think people, voters, are thinking, well, Ben Gordon's going to win six yeah, to exactly. He deserves rookie of the year. I might have think so, too. And I'm leaning towards that way. Oh, and while I got you on the line, we're going to take a timeout. Yeah. We'll get back to you. Hey, you want to throw out another one? Jason Kidd, one rebound shot his 67th career triple-double. And this is an illustration of what he's done here tonight. He set the tone on him right from the get-go. Nips and Kidd and Carter and Scalabrini for that matter. Yep. He was doing his best Vince Carter invitation early on and Kidd doing it with the rebounds, the passing, and the scoring as well. Lob to Robinson, extra feed, out of bounds. That was one time he should have shot it with Robinson. Uh, Nets claim that it was tipped. I don't think they're going to win it, though. Nope. They'll go play defense on the other side. It's almost like Jeopardy didn't run out of time. After a while, you've got to put something down. Really, I never thought of it that way. It's final Jeopardy is what yeah, you're saying. Yeah, final Weber fakes Robinson, and Weber Inside, for the deuce. Let's get it on. He has scored 14 and has grabbed six rebounds, but he is seven of 18 from the field. And he's had a, an awful lot of good looks, particularly from that foul line area. He missed about six or seven in a row at one point. Christich, drop step. We got away with a hook there. Five seconds on the shot clock. And the Nets hold on to it with five seconds to shoot. Watch Carter come into the corner. Scored earlier in the game off of that play. Lob, Kristich. Inside, no, but a foul. Now we keep talking about Cleveland. And obviously the Nets would tie the Cavaliers with a victory here. But a victory also gives the Nets the tiebreaker over Philadelphia. So if the Sixers do run into some trouble against Milwaukee or Atlanta, and the Nets continue to win, the Nets could find their way into that number seven seed. It seems unlikely, but it's still a possibility. Well, that's why you got to play them all out. You talk about you can't celebrate after one win. You can't take anything for granted. You can't look at the bigger picture until you play all 82 because it can turn on a dime. Allen Bear checks in for Philly. And the Nets now lead it 92 to 77. Some records this season with Carter scores 30 or more, 18 and 4. Christich in double digits, 27 and 12. Both in the same game. Well, that's a bonanza. 13 and 2. Well, easier said than done, but I think teams have to come to, when they're playing the Nets, they've got to try to make someone other than Vince Carter beat them. He has scored 38 tonight. Christich has scored 14. Iverson 
gets that shot off and hits. Vince Carter has not scored here in the fourth quarter. Iverson has 33 overall. Kid. There's Robinson, left hand, no. Good decision there at the last minute by, I think it was D'Alembert, going to block that shot, pulled the hand away. Lead is 14. Iverson to the perimeter. McKeats short on a three. Iguodala. He looked like he got fouled there. And Carter's got the rebound. Iguodala looking for that ball, too. I thought he got whacked on the arm, and Nets will take it. Nets, 29% in the quarter. Christich is helping. Oh, David Christich. He's looked like a different guy over the last four minutes of game action. And he's got 16 overall. The feed, Delambert, the giveaway, a foul call. It is Scalabrini. And number two, Nets are over the limit. Delambert shooting a deuce. Vince Carter doing a nice job of setting up Nene Christus, a bullet feed. And Christus will fade away over the top of D'Alembert's long reach. In the fourth quarter, Nene Kristic has logged 10 points on four of seven from the field. That includes four of his last five. Defensive player of the year. That's a tough one. That is. Uh, you know, did Larry Hughes do enough? That's, that's one name that comes to mind. He's led, led the league in steel. I, I think he's a very, very good defensive player, too. And I think Marcus Camby is a guy you have to consider just the way he changes the game. Ben Wallace all the time. Yeah, I mean, that's that's one of those guys that and Bruce Bowen. could get it. And Bowen is going to get consideration. I'm not sure if the Met fans, but... Yeah, but... So that, I, that one, I think, is, is really difficult. Carter. Got it! He's at 40 for the fifth time as a net, which ties a franchise record. Super John Williamson. And now Vince Carter. Nets cruising to a win. Back-to-back -back situation against Milwaukee at Philly. And those two games to wrap up the season become so important for the 76ers. Tomorrow really is the big game for them, considering a back-to-back -back situation at home and what's at stake. And there's the rebound for Kidd, giving him his 67th career triple-double. The line, 11 points, 15 assists, 10 rebounds for Kidd. Carter. One oh, range for Vince Carter. 43 overall. You know what's interesting about the kid getting that rebound? Usually when he gets close to something like the triple-double, needs a certain... The ball just seems to find it its does. way to him. It does. And that's... Happens to the great players. There's Green. Jump shot doesn't go. It's rare that you see Kidd finish with nine boards. Yeah. If he's got the other two categories. It's just strange, and, and again, that's just the his presence. And but certainly he almost think like, yo, Paul, um, I need I need one more. Head this way. Here's Carter. Short. Christich, offensive board. And he puts it in on the interior. Nate Christich. 18 points, nine rebounds. Nets are going to win the season series against the 76ers. They will own the tie break over Philly and Cleveland as Kidd and Carter exit at the 157 mark. They got a standing ovation. The stars shine brightest in big games, and those two guys really stepped up. Both of them great games. A double double for Carter, 43 and 11. And the triple double, as we discussed, with Kidd. And I am two beats one every time. And that's exactly what the lineup was. As you see, Vince Carter 
Another net record tonight. He already set the one for most 30 plus point games. He has tied the mark for most 40 plus point games. Carter and Kidd against Iverson. No contest. Hey, just Allen Iverson did everything possible, played an outstanding ball game. He just didn't get the help. That's the jumper. What do you got for coach of the year? You know, I'm. <laughs> I think there's been obviously a number of guys that have done an outstanding job. Uh, I'm kind of leaning to Skiles. I, I just think after they started 0-9 for him to get in the playoffs and they battled some injuries and things like that. And there's, some, there's definitely some other worthy guys. Two on one best. The finish with one and give me some of your I picked Mike Antone. You did Mike I gave it to He definitely has to be up there because I don't think anybody ever assumed yep. that Phoenix would be the juggernaut that they've been all season long. Jumper doesn't go for Davis. I had Carlisle as another outstanding candidate. Job. Look what he's had to do. And yep. look what he's had. He's done it with mirrors. 104-83. Keep it here. The Nissan post game coming up. Spiro Didis, Leslie Bogosian, interviews, analysis, scores and highlights. The Nissan post game. It's coming up here on Yes. Scalabrini, Kristich, no good. Nate McMillan as well. Yep, another guy you have to consider, George Carl. He was nearly fired, Nate McMillan. Ryan. Agreed. 25 seconds left. Next 104, Sixers 83. Fans come to their feet. This is a Nets team that opened up the season 2 and 11. They were 12 games under 500 on January the 15th. And that's it. The Nets move into the eighth spot of the Eastern Conference playoff race. They reach the 500 mark for the first time since two and two. And they knock off the Sixers 104 to 83.